So this is a problem that most users of guitar amps or keyboard amps as this one is or bass amps will encounter at some stage uh, especially with an amp like this this is the Carlsbro Scorpion uh, a stalwart of rehearsal rooms of the 1980s so this is a 30 year old amplifier and as you can hear it works if the jack plug works so we've got to do something about that now this is really it's quite an easy repair if the jack plug is dead you can get a new one for 58p uh, and it means that something like this this was destined destined this was destined for the tip uh, and that's just well it's just wrong uh, it's nothing wrong with it so anyway what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the vague parts of any amplifier of course they all have different designs but essentially they're all the same they've got control knobs and this one in fact has um, a, a dodgy sort of uh, input volume as well so it's just it just needs a bit of a cuddle so uh, and that's really you just need to just take it apart and blow some compressed air through it that's the best way to do this lots and lots of solvents and lots of switch cleaner especially with uh, the pots the control knobs on the front here uh, it'll actually um, remove the factory grease and the the uh, that's already in the pot from new anyway so i'm just going to grab a screwdriver and take the front off now safety first always disconnect amps from the mains and ideally you have to wait a few minutes before the, the the amp is safe to work on because there are all sorts of voltages inside that stay there with valve amps you need to leave it most of the day before you start tinkering uh, because you can give yourself a really nasty shock anyway let's get started so here we are with the plug removed and it's about 10 minutes later um, and I'm going to take the front off this now screws usually for amps uh, sometimes they're hidden under handles or they can be hidden under the trim but as you can see on the side of this amplifier there are two screws on each side uh, and there's a, usually a separate uh, on Carl's Pro stuff there is a separate preamp the front panel and the rear panel now jack plugs go wrong as well now a common feature of small amps like this is that they'll have headphone uh, sockets on them and how a headphone socket works is when you plug the jack in for your headphones it lifts some little spring contacts inside that tell the amplifier to direct the sound through the headphones and not the internal speaker when you take the headphones out those connectors are meant to snap back onto another set of connectors that then allow the sound to pass through so a jack plug is open to the elements it's open to dust and all sorts of other things cigarette smoke etc and you will get to the point where that headphone socket becomes a problem in itself so it's always the interface it's always jack plugs control knobs switches um, speakers it's anything that communicates with the outside world so it's just a just a, a never-ending process really but my purpose for doing this is to try and get amplifiers like this to function uh, so that you know people with no money or people starting out have got something to use um, aside from the fact that we're obviously throwing lots of stuff away including materials that are used to make things like semiconductors the transistors um, and other things that you can't recycle easily so this stuff will just end up in a uh, you know landfill so I've just got a couple of the got the, the preamp out here with the jack plug um, with using the jack plugs and in fact this is one thing because it's a small amplifier I said before that there were um, two bits there's actually one piece but there's also a, a reverb tank in this one a spring reverb which actually works really nicely it's unusual to find those still working because they're usually you know good at giving up so I've got the um, top off this I'm just going to angle the other camera so that you can see into the top of this machine you can see that there are there's a power supply here that's the transformer this is the power supply here it's usually the power supply is just these components here sort of fuses and uh, and mains wires like these here and then the preamp is over here and you can see the the potentiometers here and the jack plugs here now 
the jack plugs are soldered straight onto the circuit board. Now that could be a problem in itself. I've seen lots of stuff where because the connector is straight on the circuit board, every time you unplug it and plug it in and plug, plug, unplug it, you'll end up cracking the solder joint. So here is the underside of the preamp and you can see that the this jack plug has been replaced because the solder is a little bit different and also the front cover is different. All these other ones, the Carlsberg ones, have got metal uh, jacks with um, coloured sort of washers on, like this red one down here. So this one here has been replaced in the past and it looks like it's had a bit of a drop of solder there as well. Now, again, these are spring connectors. So a very good idea, a very good way of cleaning this stuff is to use an air duster. Uh, just a can of compressed air. This one's from Maplin. You can get loads of stuff from Maplin, including soldering irons, solder, that sort of thing. Just the tools to get you going. Uh, they're not very much money either. You can really get um, a good toolkit for 20 or 30 pounds that will actually get you the majority of the way there. So I'm going to just... I've just seen a little bit of dust flying there, so that's not going to help anything. So... Um, and I'm just going to check to see whether the circuit board, whether the connectors here, you can usually see if they're moving about with respect to the circuit board. This one doesn't seem to be, but I'm just going to rest the amp back in and switch the power back on and see if that problem has gone. Nine times out of ten, you'll find that it has. And this is the moment of truth. I'm going to plug the base back in, having just blasted a load of air in that jack plug. Notice, I've, well, I didn't really need to take the front panel off, but it's just to show you. And let's just plug that in. Well, that's better already. I'm having to properly wiggle it about to make it go wrong. That's not bad, that's not a bad start. I mean, that was two minutes and a bit of air. But that control, that input control, is a little bit iffy as well. So, okay, so power off again. Okay, so that's been a, f a few minutes just for me to, just to let the voltages uh, drop. It's always worth checking that you can actually see that the plug is disconnected from the wall. It's very easy to forget or just think, oh yes, oh, did I take the... Yeah. Voltage is not very nice, for mains voltage at least. Okay, so I've taken the front cover back off here, um, just to have a look at that input volume control there. Um, and actually you can see that because it's got wires on and the rest of them haven't that this has been replaced at some stage too so somebody's already been doing this already been saying well actually i can fix this thing um so most potentiometers have a little notch out of the case which allows you to get to blow some air through and usually a little bit of moving of that control should help to dislodge any dust and nasties. So I'm just going to put that back in and just see how far we are with that. Um, resist the temptation with switch cleaner. It's not very good for this stuff because it will take all the factory lubricant off the pots that you've just uh, that you're trying to clean. Um, of course, if the problem is bad enough. Uh, you have to find out how the, the you have to find out the size of the pot that you want to replace, um, and if you can get a good one, a really good one for three or four pounds, you know it's they're quite cheap, and all the stuff that you see in here is all off the shelf. <laughs> Well, the improvement's marginal, really. Um, so it might be that that pot is a just a bit... It might be a cheap one that was replaced. Anyway, um, now this particular amplifier, uh, in case you're looking at this thinking, how do I fix my Carlsbro Scorpion? Lots of people miss the control here that is labelled standby and pull on. Lots of people switch the amp on thinking, why is it not working? Um, uh, but the pull on thing, the writing, is actually below the uh, the volume control, rather unhelpfully. So you have to actually pull the thing 
to switch it on. So it's when you're, you know, doing a rehearsal and you want to leave your guitar and you just want to mute the amp, you just push the volume back in and away you go. There we go. And that'll do for somebody's bedroom, you know, they want to just practice. Anyway, there's a little introduction to just the basic things that you might find as problems with uh, with any any amp could be a it could be a really expensive amp that's gone wrong and it could just be the jack plug they're all off the shelf bits and there we go <laughs>